Oh, hi. Ooh. Oh, hi, friends. Hello. Hello. Welcome to Mixcast episode 26. We're getting old. 26. We're, we're getting old. We've done at least 30 hours of this. Who would have thought? You know that with every episode that goes by, that number goes higher? I know. <laughs> I'm waiting for a reversal in time so we can go backwards and I'll get younger. I know. We've had 30 hours of frogs. Hey, you can't. There's always more room for frog. There's there's too many frogs. Um, Yeah, if you guys don't mind hosting, because, you know, we ended the stream and it, it's it's gone. And if you want to re-host, it's awesome. You don't have to, but... It's appreciated. Uh, snacking, Miss JG, Bad Frog. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Ayo, hey, thank you. All right. Uh, welcome to Mixcast episode 26. If you haven't been to Mixcast before, hang out. You might enjoy it. It's fun. Um, yeah, Panda. We're going to chat about that here in a second. One shot. Hello. Um, hello, friends. Um, for those who don't know what... Um, what a mixed cast is we do a uh a, we call it a vodcast it's a live podcast where you can actually see us um here on mixer we record the whole thing we put it up on itunes acast podbean and uh youtube uh after every episode uh recently i haven't been able to because my computer hard drive is full but they're all getting uploaded as of tomorrow um but yeah, we put them all up. Uh, we have intelligent conversations here about the gaming universe, about um, cars, space, uh, um, conventions, whatever, tattoos, songs, TV shows. Sometimes they're intelligent. Sometimes they go off the rails. They're still knowledgeable, though. Um, but yeah. You obviously forgot about the Fallout conversation, didn't you? Uh well that was just nonsense that was also you, like you, episode two so we're just you, you keep you keep saying intelligent conversation that I just was want to remind before you. we learned before okay. we learned all right um but yeah um let's see um I appreciate that Cheeto I think that's all I got for like intro um let me let me go back and read some of this real quick uh hello Cheeto. Uh, yes, we're old at 26 British shares. Uh, there's no Fortnite here, Halo Collector. Um, uh, every episode that goes by, Cheeto gets a new Tesla. Uh, you can pass one my way. Um, uh, hello, Dold. Hello, Panda. Um, uh, let's see, let's see. For every Look viewer... Mister, Mister. What? Mr. Mister showed up. Oh, now Mr. Mister's here. Streamed for four hours. No Mr. Mister. Mixcast? He's here. I understand. I understand. I plan to, mister. I plan to. Oh, I've already talked to my attorney, <laughs> mister. Uh, what's up, Chili? What's up, Dog God? Hello, everyone. Um, hello, Miss JG. Um, welcome. Uh, Bedfrog, how was your day? Uh, horrible. Horrible. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Why? I got nothing. I got nothing done. Because you I, had a whole I, day. How did you get nothing done? That's what I'm trying to tell you. I had nothing. I got nothing done that I wanted to get done. Oh. My interactive board is still half built. I got nothing done on it. Well, I mean, that's not that's not needed to be rushed or anything. No, but it's driving me insane. I've got OCD, man. Oh, I see. It Mr.'s horrible. moving to Mexico under the name of Jose Philobibabas. I'll find you. Did I have to talk to people, Bad Frog? Or Bad Frog? Yes, I am Bad Frog, Miss JG. I didn't mean to call you Bad Frog. Did I have to talk to people? <laughs> yes, I did. I was on Discord again for about four hours. So. Ouch. That's fun. Um, Yeah, so... um. Mixcast episode 26 consists of the topics uh, VR masks bringing smell, um, dream vehicles, so your dream vehicles, and co streaming pros and cons. Uh, so, yeah, we'll talk about all three of those topics. Um, and we have a code of the day, which will uh, give you a chance to win a $50 Xbox gift card just for participating here in Mixcast. Um, 
I'm excited for the code of the day for next month. We're going to do it a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, uh, we got, uh, we got some interesting things for you guys. Um, but yeah, I mean, I would say I, I, I would talk about my day, but you guys saw a lot of it. I was here streaming, um, this morning we went out to the grocery store and picked up some groceries. I picked up some tater tots because we have some, uh, queso cheese that we have to use before it goes bad. So we're going to make melted cheese with tater tots. And I plan for it to be delicious. Uh, uh, I, you have chili to go with those queso cheese? On tater tots? No. Are you kidding me? Cheese and potatoes. It doesn't have to be cheese, chili, and potatoes. Yes, it does. Why? With some onions. Oh, no. See, you're going too far. A little, a little more cheese. More cheese? More cheese. Oh, my God. Oh, man. It's too much. You need a spoon to eat it. You don't eat it with your fingers because it's just—it's so messy. You need a spoon. See, I was just going to eat it with my fingers and dunk the potato in the cheese. You're just not right. Don't be pretty about it. <laughs> deep fry the taters? Ready. They're already fried taters. You can deep fry them again and get them nice and crispy. Oh, my God. Before they get not crispy with lots of cheese. Your arm is falling off right now, Bad Frog. Oh. Um... Let's see. Um, I think that's about. I mean, I I did do like I had to post stuff to Tiny Build social medias. Um, I'm running a contest every day on Tiny Build social medias. Uh, if if uh, if you haven't been watching, we're giving for every day through the remainder of the year, we're giving away 15 copies of games that we've made. So, if you want to go win a game, go for it. Um. Like, yesterday was Hello Neighbor. Today is Streets of Rogue. It's a fun game. Um, how, did, how did Rogue get her own game? Uh, well, you see? They, uh... Did someone say Rogue? Streets of Rogue. Rogues taking over streets? I don't know. It's weird. Right, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um... Yeah, there you go, Cheeto. Um, I love how when I say, no, it doesn't... Here it appears as stars on the stream. What? I'm oh. so confused. Yeah, I don't know. Twister's going to take this off the rails again. No, it doesn't. It appears fine to me, Twister. Did you get a free subscription? Uh, No, you might have been paying for it this whole time, Cheeto. Thanks, man. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. Uh, first topic, VR masks bringing smell. Do you want to start this one off, Bad Frog? Uh, yeah, sure. I, I found this a couple hours ago because it was just obviously begged for attention. You got to put this picture up because these people look crazy. If you get that, that link I sent. Oh yeah. yeah. They're adding smell and plan on adding other things to the VR masks so they can, well, you get the idea. Look at this I face. Mean, yeah. Oh, I can't. There you go. Check that beauty out. But uh, they've got a scent generator inside the mask, and they claim it could deliver 255 cents. 255 but, cents. That's a very yep. specific amount, number. Well, I, however it works, they've got, uh, it just happens to be that number. Hmm. But the thing is, imagine the depth of interaction when users can truly feel themselves on a racing track and actually smell burned rubber. Well, I don't know about that, but interesting. Or being or being able to grasp the feeling of being a battlefield on a battlefield, complete with intense gunpowder odor. So it must be I mean, like would, combinations of smells that they're using to create uh, new smells. Yeah, so. it says the use of nine individual aroma capsules. So they combine those nine together to come up with two. 255. Interesting. Scent. Yeah, not smell. It's a scent. Whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Get off my butt. It's British. interesting. Um, let's see. So uh, this company, they're called Feel Real. They make virtual reality masks, uh, the mask accessory. It offers a range of tactical sensations. Water mist. The user can feel rain on their cheeks with the ultrasonic ionizing system. So literally spray water at you. That's weird. 
Um, heat, sense the warmth of the desert with safe micro heaters. Safe. <laughs> <laughs> I can't imagine anything that's outputting heat on your face is safe. <laughs> um, wind, enjoy the cool mountain breeze with two powerful micro coolers. I mean, yeah, that one is, is just putting thing. fans. Uh, but cooling the fans, they would use a water system. So it's a te- that part is easily possible. No, the, the other ones are one odd. Horrible. Vibration. The Endure horrible. the impact of force feedback haptic motors kicked in. At what point in real life do you feel <laughs> vibrations on your face? I want to know this. I w- and we're remaining teen here. So in your in during earthquakes it would be interesting during an earthquake that you're only feeling vibrations in your face. If I'm having haptic motors, I'd want one of those chest suits that uh, that some VR companies are doing. Oh my god, that'd be crazy. Have you seen those? Those ones are really cool. I actually did beta testing for one for a while. Um, but this edition is actually uh, compatible with the HTC Vive, uh, which is the main competitor to Oculus Rift, which is the headset that I have. Um, both are fantastic. I personally like Vives better than I do uh, Oculus, but I have the Oculus. Um, but yeah, uh, it also works with the PlayStation VR, the Oculus Go, and the Samsung Gear VR, which is the cheapest one. That's like that's almost the mobile one. Actually, it is the mobile one. You attach your phone to it. Um, it connects to any of those headsets by way of Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, and sports magnet... Uh, sports magnetic mounts are supposed to keep it firmly attached. We'll see, because a lot of VR systems have you moving a lot, but it depends on how strong those magnets are. Um, it's it's actually a, a uh, it's a I think it's a Kickstarter. It yep. looks like eighty six people uh, funded about half of the goal to do it, and they're they're they look like they're on track to actually develop it, but. Um, Super I, weird. I, it would be interesting, honestly. If, for example, if you're uh, in a racing game, you get the smell of uh, the tires burning. You get the if you're playing like that, Forza and stuff, you know, you have a wheel that in hot front engine of you. smell, and yeah, then that'd be cool. You're sliding through the corners, and your face starts to shake. And yeah, I could see that. You go through the water and it blows mist on your face, but... So Cheeto brings up a good point. You play, like, some sort of, like, murder mystery game. You have a guy walk up to you. Does this smell like chloroform? I'm playing it in VR. Done! <laughs> on the ground! <laughs> What's up, Dalton? Um, uh, that would be funny. Uh, oh, Hail Collector says, have you seen a movie in a sensorium? Basically, a movie that has a similar smell system. It's like Shrek 4D at Universal Studios, right? Or the the Bugs Life Bugs Life 4D uh, thing at Universal Studios. If you've ever been to that, it's literally the same thing. It's they call it 4D theaters. It has like fans on the back of every chair and uh, a misting system underneath and stuff like that. Yeah, see, it's like the same thing. It's like the same thing. But imagine that on each individual face. When you're in VR. <laughs> um, uh, let's I, see. It would make it more realistic, except first person shooters like Black Ops and the realistic ones. I mean, I don't necessarily want to smell the, I don't want the smell of blood in the air. And, I mean, really, how far do we have to go with it? Well, see, Cheeto actually said something really close to that again. He said, This is why I play console. Because the gaming world in the next two years will be like, play COD, feel the gunshot. They actually do that now. You can do that now with VR. Um, and you can do it with console. There's a guy who did a, a Kickstarter for the Impact Vests. It has sensors that go all around your uh, your back and your chest. And when you get shot in COD or Halo or anything like that, you actually feel motors pushing in. And it feels like a little sensation, like you just got hit by something. So, um, British chairs. I could go outside, except I don't like the graphics or the storyline. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Just saying. <laughs> uh, you'd be smelling gunpowder all day in Blackout. You really would. Like, some of these games would be ridiculous. Oh, can you imagine how bad, like, something like uh, Zombies in Black Ops or, oh my God. or Resident Evil Resident or Evil. any of those? My roommate oh my wants to buy God. it. And I was like, you can have fun playing it. I'm not playing Resident Evil. What's um, wrong with you playing Resident Evil? Not in VR. I'll play it on Xbox. He <laughs> wants to play it in VR. Um, oh, I'd pay to see that. No, no. Um, let's see. Um, uh, we're not going there, Halo. Oh, I, I bet they do, Halo Collector. Uh, is live streaming fun? I think it is. Yeah, that's why I'm doing it. Um, it's actually horrid. I hate it. He hates every second of it. it. I force him onto the stream. Yeah. What's up, Dark Will? So yeah, e- neat little thing because I knew. So I knew the the chest sensory, uh, for the vibration motors in uh on like, uh your arms and your your chest and your back. Uh, some of them will even go down to your thighs and your calves too. Um, they're just like additions. You just it's essentially you just plug it in and then it further extends the electricity output. Um. But yeah, uh, I hadn't seen one that did uh, uh, like sense yet. So um, doing uh, smelling. So, um, but yeah, um, nice, nice. Darkwell. Currently using his new laptop. Did you get that for Christmas, Darkwell? Um, That's a good Christmas present there. I'm not. <laughs> Snackin said, I'm not down for that. If I wanted a burning sensation through my body, I'd just invite my ex over for dinner. God. Oh, my God. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, yeah, but you could do it in VR and not have to deal in real life. <laughs> British says, I could ride your Harley on VR without the road rash when you crash. That's true. That's but true. There's, there's nothing like picking little pieces of rock out of your leg. I'm just well, saying. VR might be able to do that for you. You put the sensory on your legs, and it just feels yep. like you're getting kicked constantly by rocks. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> if you if you go down, it'll give you some road rash, peel some skin off. Maybe. You know, they're putting for... they're putting the heat outputs in the face. You put that on your leg, burns a little bit too far. There you go, rash, burn, road burn. There you go, perfect. <laughs> it's working. We got it. We're going uh, too far with this. Eventually, it's going to be, if you die in the game, you die for real. I'm actually not even sure what you said wrong, Cheeto. I was looking for it, but I don't I don't know. I think it's because you said invite. Yeah, I think it's because you said invite. Which we should probably just take that off because we're not doing... Well, maybe after this weekend. We're going to test Fortnite again this weekend, see if it's any good. If not, we're just going to switch off of it. So. Yep, invite. Um. So yeah, interesting first topic. Um, and and this is here where it goes off the rails. You give. Well, I mean, I I, I won't I, jump too I, far into it. If people have I, questions on mine, I will answer them. But I'm not gonna go too far into it. People already know what my favorite vehicle is. So, uh, but topic number two is dream vehicle. So, uh, everyone has like everyone has like two dream vehicles. You have the one that you could potentially afford one day, right? You save up enough money, something that's affordable. Uh, usually that stays like 50000 or under. Um, and then you have your dream vehicle, which is generally like a supercar. Uh, something that's like, I don't know, 250000 plus. Um, but yeah, uh, we want to we wanna see what your guys' dream vehicles are. Because you guys know what mine is. Mine is really easy. Um, it's a Volkswagen bug, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, I check. actually own one higher than that already. So I <laughs> my dream vehicle is actually to downgrade. So okay. um, I'm just checking sure. Halo Collector says all these companies want the whole Ready Player One suit set up full immersion experience. Someday. Not oh, oh my god. Not there yet. Um So let's hear it. What's everyone's affordable? Dream car, affordable dream oh, we're car. Going with affordable, oh, yeah. Man. the The first one is the affordable one. A Dodge Viper MK1. 
Is there a certain year on that? Because I can actually display them on the stream. I don't mind doing that. They quit making the Viper several years ago. Well, if we're going with with somewhat in the affordable range, I'm I'm going with a brand new Stingray. This guy. Yep, that's a Viper. Dodge Viper MK1, the blue one. Um, Jaguar any model. Some Jaguars are really expensive though. My aunt so has a Jaguar that she let me drive. Um, I forget which I model just, it was, though. With a Jaguar, you're going to make all the towing companies happy, is all I got to say. All the towing companies happy? Why? Because they break constantly. Oh, oh. Uh, what is yours, Miss JG? You said mine's dumb. Uh... I saw an Audi R8 with, with Panda. And what else did I see back in here? Trying to find... A couple of Chevy Camaros. Yeah. Trying to find specific cars from people. Yellow convertible Beetle. That's uh, actually a cool... That's not stupid, Miss JG. Those are cool little cars. Just like C1 the C1 old C1. roundish models like these guys? Or... Or the old, old bug. Like the even older ones, like these guys. The bug. Like this guy? Uh, oh, there's a guy. So cool. There's a guy that drives around in my town with a blue one. This exact car. That one. I, I couldn't decide whether to go brand new or old one shot. But you were definitely in my ballpark when you say 69 Charger. Because... That or what was it, the 70 or 71 uh, Superbird? With the big tail fin on it? Uh, 69 Charger. You said black. Black on black. Wait a minute, isn't that that real super ultra rare Charger? Is it literally called black on black? <laughs> yes, there's a... They did not make many of them, and there's a special code on that particular one is why they call it a black-on-black. Black. I, I honestly have no idea if there's but one here that should be it. 77 or 70 to 71 Corvette Stingray. Is that... That's the body style before the mid-70s. I, I don't know what that means, Dalton, and the reason why it's being deleted is because it's not relevant at all. Like, we we have no idea who you're talking to. We have no idea what that is. It's not related to the stream at all, so, you know. <laughs> I, was just, I was just ignoring it because I didn't understand it. Yeah, that's what everyone was doing. <laughs> if, you, if you go through and say, hey, big... There's something in this that I'm capable of doing, and I'm doing this, you know. Then we would understand what you're talking about, but you're literally just saying, I'm doing this. Nobody knows what that is. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Uh, Jeep Grand Cherokee is Twisters. Like any specific year or anything, or what? Nice, Dark Will. Laptops yes. are hard to stream on, though. They are very difficult to stream on. You got to have, like, top of the top. A 90s Nissan Skyline. Yeah, but he didn't want it stock, I promise you, if he's talking about a Skyline. <laughs> so, like, super modded? Yeah, that's that's a modding car right there. Yeah, look up a uh, 69 or 70 Superbird. 70 Superbird? Yep. I, th I wanted these in there. Whoa! That's an interesting car. Yep. Plymouth Superbird. 
That is an interesting car. Yeah, they did. Muffins get straight off. up. Straight up. That's ugly. Fine. When I get one, I'm going to your house and I'm going to just sit in your front yard spinning the wheels. What do you think about that? It's for writing in the chat. I'm going to be streaming from Xbox. Oh, but you can do that right now. You don't need to improve your Wi-Fi to do that. You can do that right now. Unless you're trying to run your Xbox on Wi-Fi and stream, in which case that's a horrible idea. Uh, My boyfriend just got a Mustang, and now you want a Mustang? Which Mustang did he get? Um, okay, so what about, uh, what about, like, your, your dream, dream, like, if I won the lottery car type of deal? What is your... Kona Sig 1. Kona Sig 1? Is that three words? No, it's the name of the company is Kona Sig. Is, is it C-O or K-O? That's K-O. Oh, 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 this is... You're gonna know what this is. The 1-1. Yeah. One to one. The one one. Yeah. Yeah. That's 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 all I. It was it was easy for me. That's... This is the car to get in Forza uh, Horizon Four. So, it, what was it? its horsepower equals its weight? Something like that. Yep. Yep. That's what I want. It's an interesting car. They always make the doors open up. Really cool on supercars. Although, to be fair, like, you can do, you can have doors open up like this on your regular car. Like, it's possible. It's a lot of money. Um, the, uh, the Model X, uh, does this. Model X doors. So these ones are cool. If you haven't seen how, uh, the Model X does this door opening... They're pretty innovative. Um, so no matter how uh, tight fit you park the car, the doors will always open. So instead of just opening up like that, it'll either, if it can sense that the cars are too close together, it'll open up first and then out. Or if it doesn't matter, it'll just go out. It's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah. British chairs likes my leaning forward to the mic the reason i do that is i can whisper and still be heard yes can you hear me <laughs> um let's see uh yeah, but you can't hear twisted you want your brother's car he owns a 71 aar I don't, I don't know what this car is he's the original owner of this car it would have to be this one because these are 70s. The green. I don't even know what that is. It's also by Plymouth. So you're an affordable car. These all say 70 though. Oh, 70 through 74. So they were all the same thing through the four years. Yep. What's up, Gloomy? We're currently talking about your dream car if you were to win the lottery. 2019. Lamborghini. I'm just not a Lambo guy. I just... If I'm going big and I can... I want, I'm getting the beast. For me, it's like... If you're, if you're going to spend the money on a Lamborghini... You're clearly getting it either for the style or for the speed. But if you're getting it for the speed, you're picking the wrong car because they cost too much money and you can get cars that are faster for cheaper. Or you, can you get it for the bragging up. rights. But wouldn't you just get like a Bugatti or something if you're going for bragging rights? I feel like you just go for bragging rights for Bugattis. Something. Yeah. I don't know. If you want super fancy cars like this, like hundred percent electric, looks exactly the same to me. It does. Twenty <laughs> k oil change for Lamborghinis. Oh my god, 
No thanks. Zero oil change. We're not doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> Um, or Rolls Royce. There you go. Oh, uh, what is the McLaren? That's true. You could the go McLaren for McLarens. One. That'd be nice. There is. I saw it on a car show. That's. It's the. It's a Rolls Royce, but it's got stupid amounts of horsepower, and they were trying to make, break some uh, speed record on a beach and almost did it in a stock. Rolls Royce. It was crazy. Really? Interesting. Cool, but how would you brag if your Lambo blows a head gasket and you don't have the five million to repair it? <laughs> if it's costing you five million, I feel like you're just buying another car. <laughs> um, they're nuts, man. My dad worked for Cadillac and Rolls Royce back in the nineties. I like American built cars, but I'd love to own. A 71 AMC Javelin. Oh, man. That, that was all souped up would be kind of cool. See, it's like, an ugly car. All these old cars, they all look the same to me. They all look the same. I can't tell the difference between this car and, and, like, a, three cars ago. You can't tell in a picture. I can't tell the difference between the cars, this it, car and, like, three cars ago. They look the same. Take, like, uh... Well, at the time, the car companies all had kind of a, of a specific thing. All of them had a box car. All of them had a big, long car. Yeah. And then they had their sports cars that didn't look anything like each other. Yeah. But it's it's kind of a crazy deal. You should take the rear end of the car off for a Bugatti oil change. Do you really? You need to go to the car shows, big. I've been to car shows, but you got to realize that I'm just not a car enthusiast. I appreciate the like the workmanship that goes into uh, maintaining cars like this, but for me, I what I find impressive out of cars, uh, I have zero interest in races. Um, what I find impressive in cars is the capability. Not the looks. The look. The car could look like trash. It could literally look like a trash can on wheels. If it's impressive the way that it goes, that's what interests me. Um, like the technology of when people were capable of braking to charge their batteries for their car, uh, friction-based charging, that's impressive to me. I thought that was the most amazing piece of technology uh, that was added to cars. Um, and then like... Uh, having, uh, like, um, like corn, um, corn oil for, uh, fueling your car and things along that line. I love that stuff, man. Um, the technology advancements in cars. Um, cause I mean, j if you look at it in any way, like the, the deeper that we get into producing cars, the more beneficial they become. Uh, and you know, the faster they become. Um, it, I mean, it's proven today, the fastest vehicles are, um, are electric. Electric is the fastest vehicle. Uh, and, and that's just amazing because we've been developing engines forever. It's just crazy. You know, people have been wanting yeah. to go faster, but they've been going the wrong way. The, so the difference is, is that you're talking about electric motors that are on each tire that can control wheel spin and they also an electric motor winds up way faster than a and a petrol burning motor it's just it's just the way things are yeah which is 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 in all reality faster what the issue is is like uh they have electric car auto racing yeah and of course they go five laps and that's all they can go so they can't have pit stops and recharge because nobody's going to watch that. So they have a, another car. So they go in to charge and they get another car and yeah. they take the next car out. It's, it's all dependent on battery technology, which we haven't had. That's why you, I don't think you, we didn't see the big electric movement. I think, I think that's part of it. Absolutely. For, especially for like uh, long distance types racing, uh, that stuff will end up changing too. Um, the advancement in uh, transferring energy um, 
uh like uh i know i the it's the easiest topic for me to compare to because i know a lot about it but like for teslas what they're doing now is if you pull up to the gas pump the electric pump for teslas it's wireless charging now you don't even have to plug it in it charges wirelessly <laughs> like it's just the further we progress by investing more money into these programs is just insane and it was that way for a long time for uh uh for developing better engines and better motors and um all these different things that allow um gas power cars to to go you know faster uh for longer distances uh, things along that line is just is crazy you know we we invested tons of money to make it bigger and better and that was fantastic now a lot of it is can we do this stuff uh without um without killing the earth you know and a lot of these companies are getting better at it um you see a lot of them doing either hybrid models um so that way they can burn less gas uh while still maintaining everything that they're capable of doing um or even just the 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 ability of the engine to uh burn less gas as it's driving you know uh, my car gets 32 miles a gallon that's insane you know that's awesome uh especially compared to to other like my girlfriend's vehicle gets 11 you know <laughs> like it's crazy um so yeah well I mean, there, there's I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna graze politics just a hair and go away from it. And then the environmental deal in in a in a in a box, electric is much better, except that electric is being subsidized by everybody with rebates, plus there's all the things that go into electric cars that are not real good for the planet anyway because they take all those uh rare materials to make all these batteries and stuff. the magnets and stuff yeah the, nothing is is nothing is 100 percent clean it's just not and and they're powering them off of coal power stations half the time anyway so they're getting their power that way they're just not burning it are they more efficient with the power hell yes yeah electric motors are always going to be more efficient than it's that all depends on uh advancement of humanity you know it's like um it's it's absolutely what you said coal burning to produce electricity we have to get away from that um and a lot of it is um setting up uh uh windmills setting up solar if we took like arizona as a state got rid of housing and made that a solar panel state we would generate enough electricity to power the united states four times over one state would uh, generate that much electricity the problem you again is the s solar panels are relatively easily damaged they're better than they used to be i'll give you that and they take a lot of materials too to make solar panels so you're in the, kind of the same boat you do i i, I if we hadn't have screwed ourselves with this big anti-nuke thing there's a perfectly almost clean source of electricity is nuke i mean it, it really is but we can't do that anymore so it's going to take a lot of advancement in battery or alternate fuels i mean you still got the theory of burning cars on water by breaking it down to hydrogen so i mean it's just yeah a lot of it is advancement of uh humanity as a whole uh like uh, moving together in the right direction to allow um, a better outcome in the end, and that's hard to do. That's really hard to do. So yeah, I just I just don't like the government pushing the direction that it wants to go. Sure, absolutely. Because they don't make the best decisions by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah. Which I, I'll give Elon Musk this credit for this is he's trying to keep the government out as much as he can on some of his stuff, even though we are supporting the selling of his cars, but it's, it's neither here nor there, but he at least is trying with the space program is trying to keep the government from pushing him the way they want to go. Yeah. Which is really smart. It's pretty interesting, but I'll get off my high horse. Now that was, that was what I wanted to say. No, it's all good.
Uh, so what is, uh, Cheeto said this? Yeah. Cheeto said the BMW M3 series is, uh, beautiful. My friend actually got one of these last year. And then he took me to the, uh, BMW, uh, M series event, uh, to go race these. That was fun. That was interesting. So I got to race one of those. Um, that'd be cool. Yeah. Uh, and it was like a giant car show too. Everyone brought their M series cars. So they brought their, their M uh, fours and their threes and their fives and their sixes and it was it was it was super interesting it was a fun event um and like when i say race them it was like race around uh along a mile long track as well as doing um uh weaving between cones that was so hard the race was literally less than 15 seconds long um uh flight little d you don't have to spam stuff in all caps we 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 get it we get it we get it <laughs> Um, what, what exactly did that say anyway? Because I saw the beginning of Tesla and then and said no Tesla with suicide doors and Galaxy paint job. Oh, okay. I... Um. So yeah, uh, dream vehicle for whom? Uh, British. Um. Look at the interior of the Spiker C8. It's nuts. Biker C8. Yeah, it's the uh, Rolls Royce. Rolls Royce Wraith is just a beast of a car. With it's definitely interesting. That's nuts. Like it's pretty, but does that interest me? Not really. I like really clean. I like practically nothing on the interior of a car. I'm I'm kind of old school. I like speedometer, tack, oil, water. That's it. Just those four. Uh, hence why you like Tesla. I mean, Tesla does go that route, but that is it's a more modern and minimalistic thing, and that's just the style I like. I like if I were to build my house someday, minimalistic, modern. You know, uh, that's that's what I really like. So, it's just a happy coincidence. That's what Tesla does as well. Um, energy British. talk instead of uh, what I was meeting. Oh, yeah, it's just talking about the differences in cars and advancements of cars. But yeah, no, no, we're, the the main goal of the con uh, the conversation was uh, for dream cars. So, if you have more dream cars, I'm pulling them up. Feel free to feel free to mention one. Any the specific they... jag? Go ahead. That's the only reason it drifted that way took 30 minutes of the show and i couldn't talk at all so <laughs> i threw it in there <laughs> um it's the same look uh nice but i don't but That's don't too look, much wait i'm the same look nice but don't look like i scream i have money unfortunately if you own a tesla it says i have money when unfortunately that's not the case because i don't have money and i plan to have mine by march so um but yeah it's just the unfortunate circumstance that comes out of it because i don't want like i don't want to be judged because i have a tesla and for saying like oh i have all this money you know i don't i just work hard and this is what i like it's like my girlfriend she drives a um what does she drive someone knows mr knows not bad frog would have known I've never heard, so. She drives a Subaru BRZ. Oh, that's right. Oh, those are so fun. Yeah, she drives this. I've driven it a few times. So fun. This was her affordable dream car. I, I could I could live with that. Picture's not clearing. Oh, it's a super small picture. She drives... She drives the red one. Yep. Those are nice. That is a not appealing picture of it. That's what she drives. Yeah, Subaru BRZ. She enjoys it. That's her affordable dream car, and she got a chance to buy it. So it's actually at the lot. Uh, it, ha it had been in like a small accident or something. So she got a pretty good deal on it. 
Um, that's awesome. I really like the Subaru Baja. Look that up. It's super lame uh, to most, but for some reason I love it. I think they also had one of these in the lot too because I recognize the name. Yep, they had one of these in the lot. Yep. All right, this is uh, back in 1985. <clears throat> um, a friend of mine had one of those at the time, and uh, it has two back seats that are back in the back of the bed facing away, and it's made that way. But that's how, like, six of us got to school every day was in his Baja. Yeah, that's and funny. It was always it was always a fight for the uh, the two seats in the back so you didn't have to bounce around on the, on the metal. <laughs> That's funny. Um... Of course, and I've got another silly one. I, I have to, oh, I've got two. Like a 1986 Buick Grand National. It's a V6 uh, turbocharged car that's just a beast if you tune it. And then any El Camino. I just like El Caminos. 19, oh, that's, that's a 4,000, 5,000 pounds of roll you over. This is what, uh, what Twister at one time wanted. I had a friend that drove something very similar to this in high school. He drove, uh, like a 1950, uh, Cadillac. I mean, it was beat to hell, but he got it for like a grand. <laughs> and... It just, it was yellow, it was like paint falling off the side type of deal, but you knew you were safe. You knew that no car could run into you, no truck could run you over. You were literally in a, like, in, like, Fort Knox in this thing. (laughs) So it was, like, the safest car, and it has the bench style with, like, I, I think it might have had seat belts. I don't even remember type of deal. <laughs> they're literally as big as a boat and they're awesome. Yeah. My buddy, his name was Keenan. He actually joins the stream sometimes. Uh used to drive something similar to this. So um and then British said Um XJ220. One of these guys? Impalas? That's a... But that's not a dream car, though, is it? Like, that's a, that's a very affordable car, isn't it? You don't have a super expensive dream car? They're all ugly? Muffin. Like, not even... Like, I understand why some people say that, um... Uh, some people say that Lamb- Lamborghinis are like really ugly car because they're they're just there's so much to them. There's so much. Um, I like if one day I could ever afford a, a Tesla Roadster, um, that would be the one supercar that I would get because I agree. They're like the more that gets added, all these jaggeds and stuff, it doesn't appeal to me. It's the minimalistic. I like just the smooth, clean design. That's it. You know? I like just... That's kind of pretty. Yeah, it's just... They're not... They're not overly done. It's just smooth panels. That's it. I want to scare people when I step on the gas pedal. With the loud noises? Yeah, I'm talking to people outside the car. Yeah. No, this one, you literally, if you put the pedal to the floor, not only is it the fastest car you've ever been in, but no one will ever know. Because <laughs> they didn't hear you leave. <laughs> but, uh, we lived in uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado a couple of years ago, and that's where Pikes Peak's at. And they have that yearly Pikes Peak race where they run up the uh, mountain. And there's usually a couple people die every year because it's a long ways up. Yeah, but the year we were there, we didn't go to it. But they ran an electric motorcycle, and it was flying down. Yeah, but the guy said it was so weird to drive 
and kind of hard because he didn't have um, noise to kind of judge off of. He had to look at gauges to see what was going on. Gotcha. Yeah, no, like, uh, that's actually one of the one of the things. My mom had just gotten a Tesla Model 3, and she said one of the things that she had a really hard time adjusting to were two things. That she never had to go to a gas station. She said it was really weird. She actually hadn't been to a gas station in a year uh, until she came up here and had to get a rental car. Uh, and then two um, was that when she drives, you don't hear anything. Literally, the only noises you hear are if you have the radio on or if you don't have the radio on, you literally only hear the tires on the road. There's no noises. There's no engines. There's no uh, shifting involved. None of it. So uh, she said it's really weird adjusting to the electric uh, uh, motors pushing the car forward. So. Um, but yeah. Uh, is, is this the car that you were talking about, British? XJ XF Jag series. I can look up the XF textual. Thank you for the, uh, for all the sparks, man. Um, you said wood panel. So this might have some of the wood paneling. I feel like this XJ might be the one that my, uh, aunt had bought that she let me drive. I don't remember what it was. Because the other one you said was XJ or XF Jaguar. Oh, wait, it might have been. It might. No, it wasn't this. It wasn't like a because that looks like a hatchback. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's was just a weird picture. <laughs> Gloomy is trying really hard. <laughs> We're going to get to that here in a second. Gloomy. Don't worry. I can't remember what she let me drive. Ooh, that means I can... Uh, when we get there. I think we beat this one to a dead horse. I was just curious to see what other people... Uh, what other people like in cars. That was a fun car to drive. She tried to impress me with how fast it goes because it is a fast car. It's like uh, 0 to 60 in like 3.1, which is pretty fast. Um, but it's not the fastest car I've ever driven. So she was pretty surprised when I said that, um, fast is fun. It is fun. It is fun. Um, the people that pull out of the, uh, pull out the soundproofing and race them at the track, uh, say all you can hear is rocks kicking up. Wait, that pull out the soundproofing. What do you mean? Like when you race them, you got to take as much weight off them as you can, and soundproofing is a lot of weight. Yeah, but you say all you can hear is rocks kicking up. You wouldn't hear the engines and stuff. I don't understand. Not on an electric car. Oh, he's talking about uh, electric cars. Oh, 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 oh. Gotcha. There's a video of a YouTube uh, or on YouTube of a stripped Tesla and it uh, trolls. Uh, 1320 and all you hear i don't i don't know what i don't know what half that sentence is and it trolls 1320 and all you hear is rocks what does that mean i'm so lost <laughs> myself what does and it trolls mean i'm gonna send you the video okay uh, electric cars are scary because you can't hear them pulling up behind you. That's the whole thing with, uh, yeah, in the office when, uh, Dwight goes to fight Andy and he says to meet him out in the parking lot and then Dwight goes to run over or Andy goes to run over Dwight with his car, but his car is a hybrid and he's running on electricity. So when you go under five miles an hour, it's not actually doing anything but running the electric. So he doesn't hear the car. And he goes to run over Dwight with the, with the car because he couldn't hear it. So, pretty funny. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, Twister says, I mean, I would like to get a Tesla that has the self-driving feature, but at the same time, I'm hesitant to get one. So, the self-driving feature, there's multiple of them. Um, 
the first one is called uh it's called autopilot autopilot is not self-driving autopilot is the is essentially upgraded cruise control so whenever you drive in a tesla the tesla has cameras mounted all around the car those cameras help you stay in the center of the lane it's scanning for the white lines on the road um uh so at all times it's keeping you in the the direct center of the lines um so that way you don't veer off accidentally um so basically you just have to essentially just press the gas that's it um and for teslas you don't have to use the brake the brake isn't necessary the car self brakes um so uh there that's the first one if you want the full self driving that'll cost you about $80,000 um because you have to buy like the sixty thousand dollar version of the car and then buy all of the self-driving upgrades there's three upgrades and the self-driving is the last one so it costs you another like it costs you about eight grand total uh for the cameras themselves the the median upgrade you have to get is also like another 10 grand so it costs you about eighty thousand dollars so um but yeah, you don't trust self-driving cars? Why not? What's not to trust? All right. Code of the day. Let's do that. Let's do that. Um, if you haven't been here for code of the day, code of the day is where we do a code on the screen. All you have to do is type exclamation point mixcast in the chat. You'll get a link where you can enter the contest. Um, that link is only able to be clicked on... Uh, on PC, tablet, or mobile, can't click on Xbox. Um, you click that link; it'll whis- uh, it'll be whispered to you, um, and you just follow the social media stuff. It's like, say follow us on Twitter, follow us on Mixer, all that stuff. Um, if you do that, you get a bunch of points to be able to win an Xbox gift card for fifty dollars. Every episode, we put a uh, code up on the screen. That code um, allows you to uh, get some bonus points into winning the gift card. Um, So if you've missed previous episodes, you can go back, watch them, and get the previous codes. Uh, All episodes are going to be uploaded tomorrow when I get my new hard drive. Um, Today's code is... Atari 2600. Um, No spaces in that, and 2600 is not spelled out. It's literally Atari... Two six zero zero. Um, I went old school with that code. Yeah, super old school. Um, so go go I, do that. Get yourself some bonus points. I yeah. said old school. I'm not super old, man. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, and get yourself some bonus points. And that's exclamation point mix cast in the chat. Um, in answer to your question, uh, Cheeto. Yes, you would still get a DUI. Because ultimately, whoever's sitting in the driver's seat is still in control of the vehicle. Um, Cheeto says, I'd rather drive the car than uh, and be in control than have the car drive me. Um, well, so just so you know, the self-drive, by law, you still have to have your hands on the wheel. Just with the self-drive, you don't have to. You know, you can take your hands off and the car will keep driving. Um for now, yeah, no, that's true. But um, uh, for now, it's still by law. You have to have your hands on the wheel. Um, so technically, you're still in control. Tesla is not telling you to break the law. It's just telling you that if there's a circumstance where your hands are not on the wheel, the car is capable of driving itself. Um, let's see. Uh, so here's a question. If you're self-driving and you've been drinking, could you still get a DUI? Yes. Reason being... Um, you can get a DUI for being on a bicycle. Uh, if you are operating a vehicle of any type and you have been drinking, you can get a DUI. Um, even if you are in the car, the car is off and the keys are in the passenger seat. It's not even in the ignition. You can still get a DUI because you are in the vehicle there's uh intent to drive whether you were not intending to or not that's not up to the person who found you that way the person who found you 
shows that you had an intent to drive because you were drunk and you were in a car. So, um, but yeah, don't, uh, DUI drugs included. That's true. Uh, drugs, which, do which goes back to my words to live by, which you won't let me use, but that's all right. I, oh God, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> um, got off the rails again. Well, it, I mean, that was just a, I mean, I, I went off the rails for what? 60 seconds. Um, uh, no, on that last that. one, just talking about whether you were in a DUI or not. <laughs> um, okay. I'll, uh, I'll put that in, uh, the mixed cast channel, mister. Um, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah. You are a bit sassy. My friend. Uh, so you'd rather take an Uber. Well, yeah. If you're planning to go drink, take an Uber. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, I also don't trust fully self-drive control freak. Perhaps. I mean, that's fair. That's fair. It was weird doing it my first time. I was like, "Whoa, this is crazy." Um, uh, thorough bench. Hi, how's it going? Insurance companies will eventually force everyone into self-driving cars. I hundred percent agree. I think that day is coming. All cars on the road will end up being self-driving cars. There will be no such thing as traffic anymore. So, uh, I think that day is coming. It'll take about twenty-five to fifty years, something like that. Yeah, the cost of things is going to have to come down dramatically. Well, but as I mean, more as more use comes into it, the cost comes down. Yeah, because of the old bulk issue. But you, I mean, you you already see it happening, though. I mean. Tesla yeah, is I, it, reduced from 80,000 to 35, so it's happening. Plus, like, Elon Musk tearing up the patents to Tesla means that anyone can make one, you know? So, this literally the day, um, literally the day Elon Musk tore up the patents to uh, Tesla cars, Ford bought a original Model X, uh, which was like a $250,000 car. Uh, and who knows what they did with it. I guarantee you they tore the car apart, found out exactly what did what. And, uh, they're, they're in the process of making their own, but, um, so I'm, if I'm eating a big Mac and drinking a large Coke and then I hit drive mode, uh, then it will drive me. Then it will drive me. I'm not interested. What? I think he forgot it in the lesson there. Yeah, I'm a little confused on that one. I think if he couldn't drink, eat a a Big Mac and a a drink after he puts the drive mode on, then he's not interested because he still has to keep his hands on the wheel. I mean, by law, he doesn't have to because the car is capable of doing it. But by law, he has to. Um, Just like in the state of Washington, they changed the law. If you are drinking or eating, making it so that way you do not have both hands on the wheel. If you change lanes while eating or drinking, you can be pulled over and arrested. You can be arrested for eating or drinking while driving. Only if you change lanes, though. If you're driving in the same lane, you can't. Or texting. Yep. They did enforce it. Yep. Yep. It is enforced. 100%. Oh my god. Oh man, it blanked it out. It's because it's yellow. <laughs> Green screen doesn't like yellow. Yeah, well I can fix that. Um ten to fifteen years for driverless car will be prevalent. I don't think it's that fast. I don't no. think it's that fast. There's only one company doing it. That's why I don't think it's that fast. Maybe if there was like years. five companies doing it, I think it would be uh I think it would be faster. I'm I'm still of the opinion they're gonna find another source of propulsion that's going to take out the gas powered motors and electric. I just, that's just oh, my something belief. outside of electricity. Yep. I think there's going to be something outside of that. That's going to take it over. That's going to be what's going to power power plants and run vehicles. I just, I think, I, just, I, I mean, I that, just, that essentially belief. is already possible. Uh, like one of the cheapest off, uh, option is actually nuclear fission, but you're not going to exactly. put nu- you're not going to put nuclear fission in a car. 
because no, but people, if you could run nuclear people fission, driving bombs, <laughs> if you could put nuclear fission plants everywhere without people freaking out about hybrid kids, then electric cars would make a hundred percent more sense because they would be everywhere and you're pulling power off of a clean source. Yeah. But that's just not the way it is. But yeah. I haven't been here in a while. Do you still play Fortnite? Uh, not right now, but potentially further. <laughs> it's backwards. You nerd. <laughs> you got to write it backwards. Oh, you don't have my camera turned around. I haven't turned around. Oh, yet. you. Duh. <laughs> Here, I'll do this for you. Hold on, hold on. So you don't have to write it backwards. I got you. Hold on. Hold on. We got this. Transform. Uh, flip horizontally. There you go. Now do it. Now do it. I'm still going backwards. You're not going backwards. See? There you go. There you go. There you go. But I want to see him write it backwards. <laughs> Actually, I can write backwards. I learned that in the Navy. Because we had to write backwards on the grease pencils. Oh, the interesting. That I've gotten back actually. In the old days. Uh, there was uh, I forget what I was doing, but there was a purpose into having me write backwards for something uh, that I like. It was a hobby that I was picking up for a while, but I don't remember what it was. Uh, and I actually got really good at doing it. But like, if you're not doing it all the time, you lose that really fast. So tomorrow, gloomy. What, pros and cons for coasting? Yeah. We could do yeah, just not... a quick section of it. Okay. Um, plus, like, we derailed off of dream cars anyway. Um, but, yeah. Um, let's talk about it. Um, pros and cons to uh, co-streaming. Um, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying it's terrible to all just for me because the law is within my state. The law is within my state. Kent, Kent Twisted asks, is, if my favorite song in the Navy by the Village People, let me discuss how much hate there is in the Navy for that song, especially when I was in. It was lots of hate. So, just letting you know. No, I'm saying I'd rather be in control than have a mode in which the car will drive itself. It's literally... In my opinion, a terrible idea considering the laws within my home state. Well, you you don't have to have the self-driving. I'm confused. <laughs> you don't, like, the, the if you don't want to turn on the self-driving, you don't have to turn it on. You can still drive the, the normal way. It's not like it's always self-driving. It's a mode. You have to enable um, autopilot and then you enable self-driving. Um, I found it. I've been having ads autoplay on some tab this whole show, and I finally found the tab that was on. Oh my god! So we just need something to complain about. I uh, okay. <laughs> um, all right. Co-streaming pros and cons. Um, so yeah. Um. Is there anyone here that doesn't know what co-streaming is? Is there anyone who doesn't know what it is? I feel like everyone here on Mixer knows what co-streaming is. Um, I, I'm going to let you take it from your side, and I'm going to take it from the other side. Okay. Um, so, as a streamer, uh, co-streaming. So, as a larger streamer here on Mixer, um, I think co-streaming is bad. Um, um, I don't think it's uh, good for especially larger streamers for larger streamers it can't be worse um only because um if you have a population that likes a if you have a population that likes b um and you merge a and b together you're not going to have a result that says a plus b equals c you're gonna have a result that says a plus b equals a plus b they're going to like different topics. They're going to mash and collide, and it will not be good. Um, some people. To that. Sorry. I'd say there's certain exceptions to that. that like uh, that's what I was Fortnite, just about to say. Fortnite and Fortnite. All right. Sorry. Yeah, there. That's what I was about to say. Is that you will have some people who are like, um, 
uh, that are willing to accept any sort of games, right? But you're going to have some people, if you have a Fortnite streamer, say, um, and you're, you're partnering up for a charity event with, like, a puzzle streamer or something. Your puzzle streamer, people, uh, fan base might not like uh, Fortnite, and the Fortnite are going to be super pro Fortnite, you know? Um, so you'll run into issues along that line. The biggest problem for me, the biggest problem, are bots. Bots and mods are the worst part of CoStream. And I'm not saying that mods are bad. I'm saying that mods mod per channel. So when you have a mod that knows all the rules to one channel, and then you have another channel who acts very differently that might say more profanity, then you have the uh, bots from a different channel who has less profanity start deleting and timing out these people who are used to a different channel that's not a good thing. You don't want a population to be upset for an, for an environment that they are comfortable in. Um, the other problem, which I said, are bots. Bots will auto do those timeouts. Plus, if you don't have a bot that's built like my channel where it deletes everything except for minor stuff, you're going to see the bot. It'll be just giant bot wall. Like just constantly people gambling, people reacting towards the bot doing all these things and it's just terrible and if they use the same commands it gets really dangerous um same commands double gambling um double uh double reactions you know if you have um i don't know uh exclamation point game you're gonna have uh the the bot from both channels reacting to that and it just gets terrible it's really bad um those are just technicalities, though, but they're not technicalities that can be fixed. You know, the bots exist in those channels. So unless the streamer is going to go out of their way and delete all of those commands, it's just it's done. You know, uh, I refuse to edit my bot uh, to do co-streaming because co-streaming doesn't get that many views because most people can't view co-streaming today uh, until computers get cheaper and better. Most people can't even watch them. Um, uh, you'll see lag from one streamer. You get people, you get co-streamers who not, who aren't experienced and you'll get double voice channels. It's just, it's the worst. So me going through and editing a bot that I've spent a lot of time on and making perfect doesn't make sense because it's not going to be beneficial in the end, especially if it's like a one-time thing. Uh, it just doesn't work. Um, so yeah, let's go through the uh, let's go through the comments and then we'll jump onto your side of it, Bad Frog. Okay. Um, so let's see. Um, co-streaming pro, you have a sidekick to rebound off of. That is a pro. I agree. Look at Bad Frog right here. We're not co-streaming, but conversation between the two of us as well as chat works really well. That is the one giant benefit. My stream, literally, how I started streaming here on Mixer was co-streaming it was literally a co-stream channel it was the big and dj show that's what it was me and my buddy dj streamed here every day for several months that's how i started um and uh and then eventually we just had different work schedules and we ended up splitting apart uh no hard feelings against him i love the guy i enter his channel we host each other all the time you know no problems it's just that's just what happened um and the the conversations between the two people were fantastic um snack and said quick question let's say i'm streaming and i decide to have a second player on my stream who is not a streamer is that counted as a co-stream are they bringing in their co-stream or is it something like me and bad fraud do they have another camera like what are the technicalities between that this is not a co-stream this is not a co-stream what we are doing right now is not a co-stream Co-stream is where you literally see two different streams on one channel. Um, I guess I'll go on with Cheeto here at the bottom here. Because I'm getting back to my stream life. However, I play with one other user consistently every day. Is that a con or a pro? We have matching personalities play with different strategy, making a solid team. That's up to you two. I, there's no pro or con to it. Um. 
if you're both your communities like the same thing and you get along with each other, it's obviously a pro, but there's no real con or pro to it in my eyes. If it is, is what it, like when Hal Big started out with his co-stream, there was no con or pro to it. It's just the way it was. So I just can't say one way or the other on that myself. Um, Cheeto, what device are you watching the stream on right now? <clears throat> I'm literally going to link you to a co-stream. Because I'm not sure if you... I'm not sure if okay, you you're... know what a co-stream is. It just sounds like if you... For what you're talking about, it sounds like you're saying that there's just someone in your microphone who plays with you all the time. That's not a co-stream. That's not a co-stream. That's just someone who's in your Xbox Live party or in your Steam or in your Discord party. When 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 Big opens up the party for four, three other people to join him in Fortnite, that is not a co-stream. He's just playing with other people. And technically, if one of those other people was, were, were streaming, but they didn't combine their uh, streams together, it still wouldn't be co-stream. I've seen co-streams before. I'm just asking if that counts. Sorry for the confusion. No, does not count. Co-stream, literally just co-stream. Co-stream, that's it. Like two screens, bringing in two screens, screens on one channel, two separate entities on different channels, merging them together onto one. What, Muffin? What did I do this time? <laughs> um, but yeah. Um, so yeah, that's my. those are my pros and cons to, uh, to co-stream. Uh, let's hear from you, Bedfrog. I'll, I'll take it from a mod point of view, and I'm going to kind of go with some of your points. From a mod point of view, it's a nightmare. Yeah. There's, I know, Muffin, I figured it out. Um, if you get like four people streaming together and they're all running mix it up, they're running all the same commands. So one of them will type in exclamation co-stream and you've got four bots telling you who the co-streamer is. Yeah. And it just wipes out chat. And almost all the commands are the same. So every time one of them types it, it comes out four times. Yeah. It's it's ridiculous. If they could separate the chats, it'd be fine. And then the big thing he pointed out is channels mod differently. I, there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. I have to I have to mod every channel that I mod differently. If I modded Big's channel, it'd be different than everybody else's. It's just the way it is. And you can't get the same moderation out of it because you'll delete one of their regulars' comments that they'd let go, and then they get mad at you for deleting it, and or you'll ban somebody that you think is ridiculous but is one of their regulars. It, it, it's just it's not a good idea. I just I, I hate it. If they yeah. could separate the chats, it would be okay. I, but the benefit to having the chats together is if you happen to mod both channels, you don't have to be in both channels at the same time. That's a very rare occasion though. Yeah. It's, it's a rare occasion, but it's happened for me a few times, but yeah. So (laughs) not for me. I know. Um, From a spectator point of view, it's, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Even with two, you get two small screens. You can't tell what's going on. They're not synced together ever. You can tell by when they're talking, their audio audio isn't synced. And then one of the things you talked about was some of them don't know how to get their audio right. So you'll listen to one channel and you'll hear the streamer and nothing else. And then you'll listen to the other channel and you can hear everybody. Yeah. It's and bad. when you put four together, it's even worse. It's terrible. Because you've got to find the channel that has all four people on there. It's It's really bad. bad. I hate it as a viewer and a mod when it when it boils down to it. I I don't like it one bit. Yeah. The only exception I've I've been able to see is like uh, Sea of Thieves, because you you can delete all the other co streamers off your screen and watch one. That's what I do. <laughs> that's yeah, that's what I do. But a game like Sea of Thieves, where it's almost a requirement to have four people, and you can kind of hear what they're doing all together, even though you don't have you can just watch one. I, I don't have a problem with that one. Game There's like a that. lot of solutions into making it better. If you have three of the four muted, have the one unmuted, but the one who's unmuted needs to say that they are the host of the co-stream, that the rest of the three should be muted except for that person, and all four streamers have equal talking capabilities through a program such as Discord. 
you do a Discord microphone, um, yep. all four people are coming in through that audio source and have the capability of talking. And that's how it should be done. But not a lot of people understand that. Um, okay. it's, it's very unfortunate that people try to do co-streams but don't succeed at it when they're doing something that's, you know, it's, it's like, you know, you're going to go try to play against LeBron James, but you've never played basketball before. Like, why? You know, play play some practice rounds before you go into doing it. It doesn't make any sense, you know. Um, and, and I'm not saying like, you know, oh, this is my first co-stream. Why are you yelling at me big? No, if it's your first one and this is your practice round, good. Learn from it. You know, there's a whole bunch of things that you can probably be doing to make it a better experience for the viewer. Keep doing it. Grind it out. Make it perfect. But there's people that go through and they're just playing their games. And, you know, they're they're acting like as if everything is normal. That shouldn't be it. You know, <laughs> you, you're trying to put on a show for people. You're trying to uh, bring entertainment to a group of people. That should be done with respect to the viewer. So, uh, Gloomy said, what if you're both small channels and there are benefits? Basically, it's better to solo stream or co-stream when you first start. I, Big is going to have a different opinion than me, I think. I think there's no benefit whatsoever to co-streaming. I do have a different as opinion. Far, as, as far as the streamers go. I, I, I just don't see it from, from a mod point of view. I don't see either one of them gaining a viewer at all. Because they're both playing the same game to start with if they're co-streaming, more than likely. And people aren't going to jump out of one community into another because they're all streaming at the same time, obviously. Yeah. Mixer has and, to to create a section. Just a little tidbit on that. Uh, uh, a follow all button. It has to be done. Like, the fact that that's not yeah. done for co-streaming and co-streaming has been out for almost two years... Almost two years Mixer has had co-streaming and there's not a follow all button is unbelievable. Like, I love this platform. There's simple additions to making your unique platform have a, a like, co-streaming was unique for over a year. Like, how do you not have it? <laughs> yep. And then, and the, you get into uh interactive boards now it looks like if you've got a four-way co-stream you got to go shut off all four interactive boards now because they'll just keep popping up which drives me insane i haven't even figured that out i just hide the mix play i like i I do but it keeps with a four-way course co-stream now they just keep popping up Uh, and it just just drives me insane but i i don't like the interactive boards unless i can hide them if i want to go look on them for something i will but i don't i don't like this automatic open interactive board where the screen's this big and you got this much interactive board now. Yeah. Believe me, I've been thinking about reducing mine to just simpler, fewer buttons because I have a lot, but uh, my buttons have actually been the same for two years. So it hasn't been until recently that I've even added a couple. Uh, well, that's what's caused the delay in me building this one. I've decided that I'm going to go with four pages instead of three to cut down the number of buttons on a page. So... Four just, pages instead of how many buttons do we need for mix play? It's just Twitter. Well, the, the problem is, is there's three sets of buttons for a bunch of stuff, but then we have some other stuff I want to do. But I, I'll show; it'll make sense. All right. I'll Plus, see I'm it. only going to use I'm only going to use half a page now, for that reason. But we're that's gonna, neither here nor there. We're going to see. I might edit some of these down. <laughs> he ain't touching nothing. Um. But yeah. Um. The so my argument on that is I think co streams are great for growing streamers. Um, I think that they shouldn't be done every day, but dedicated days to bringing two communities together and uh and having a unique show out of it. These two streamers who work together really well, their communities collide really well. Um, uh, um, like if you guys remember, there used to be a streamer called Inferno. Inferno was really good uh, friends with Chef. Um, those two were like brothers. They acted really well together. I always said that they should build their own communities um, and that they should have weekend shows together. Um, and I think it would have been fantastic. Those two were great. It was like me and DJ. 
I ran my show, he ran his show, and then we collided and ran uh, shows together um, as co-streams. And it would allow uh, both parties to bring new followers to each other um, and 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 bounce conversations off of each other, have a good time, make a funny show, um, things along that line. It works really well. Um, does he not stream anymore? He was doing a little bit. Uh, I haven't seen him in a while. Oh, well, I mean, he just asked if he doesn't stream anymore. He 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 did for a little bit. Um, he got a new job and he was uh, adjusting his schedule. But I haven't seen him online in a bit. I think he has stopped recently. Uh, hi, fake dinosaur. Um, but yeah. Um, do you have any suggestions on getting viewers to follow both channels? It's really hard. It's really hard. Your best goal, and this is something that's new for co-streaming, is... Um, when you do a co-stream, if you're doing a regular co-stream with a streamer, so this only happens if you have a, a regular show, um, is you have streamer A and you have streamer B. If you're doing two shows a week with each other, day one should be, uh, should be host or started by streamer A. Day two should be started by streamer B. Because the person who starts the co-stream is the host of the co-stream. They will get the followers. It's really unfortunate. Um, but uh, it's essentially playing the fair game. That's all it is. So if, uh, if day one is Saturday uh, for someone and day two is Wednesday, Wednesday is going to get the cheap end of, this, uh, end of the uh, deal. So um, you want to switch between day one and day two every other week. So uh, uh, channel A gets Saturday on week one, um, and channel A gets uh, Wednesday on week two, and that's just how it has to be. Um, yeah, I can give you some suggestions on what not to do, because it, it drives me insane hearing them do it. Do not post co-stream in your stream every five minutes and then beat your viewers over the head to go follow everybody else in the co-stream. It, it just pushes people out. You should be doing it like once every somewhere between half hour and an hour, just to remind yep. people because, yep. um, uh, it is important that if you're gaining new people in the thing is you have to, if you're co-streaming, you have to watch your numbers, which is the number one thing that you say not to do. If you, if you're co-streaming, you simply have to watch your numbers because, if you're saying go follow the other streamer, but you haven't gained any new viewers, you're literally telling this to people who already know it and they're just getting annoyed. Um, yep. So you have to watch your numbers. And unfortunately that's one of the rules to not do when you're a streamer. So and I'm still battling that rule, but I'm going to get over it eventually. Yeah. Bad frog will they, learn to not watch okay. his numbers. If I, if I, I don't know, but, and, and the other thing that I, and I know why they do it. If you're doing giveaways in one channel, Don't tell people they have to for, follow all four streamers, and are like because a that's not enforceable because yeah. the wherever the bots run is where it's going to check for followers. It ain't checking the other ones, um, and and lying to the communities that it is 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 stupid because eventually they're going to find out. But it it just goes back to the pushing and pushing and pushing. Follow, 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 follow. You're going to drive people out of your community more than you're going to keep them in. And your regulars don't want to hear that crap all the time anyway. Yeah. So. Thank you, Boxman. Hi, Firemaster. And my day is going really well, Fake Dinosaur. I hope your day is going well. Um, no, you're absolutely right. Um, yeah, it's it's tough. Co-streaming is tough. I think it's worth it if you have someone that you can do it with on a weekly basis, not on a once in a while occasion. It's not worth going through the hassle, to be honest. It's worth it if you're doing a reoccurring show. If this mixcast was a co-stream, it would be worth it, but it's not. Um, and in all honesty, it would only be worth it if this wasn't possible. This is better right. than a co-stream. Um, yeah. This is way better than a co-stream because we don't have... All I've got to worry about is Discord running. He's got to worry about everything else running. 
a co-stream, both of us got to worry about everything running. Yeah. And then and put syncing up together. Multiple communities and different, uh, like, just, it's it's a nightmare. It's not good. Hi, Zybits. I honestly would prefer to watch, we'll just stick with two, ah, let's go with four streamers. And I'll say they're all playing Sea of Thieves. I would prefer all of them stay independent of each other and not jam their streams together, but have all their audio open, of course. Granted, you're going to get a lot of crosstalk as they're talking to their community too. And, and the better ones will be able to use either the button on their stream deck or whatever else to mute and say, talk to the channel and then unmute. But I would prefer that long before I'd prefer co-streams just for the simple fact that it's, there's a lot of technical issues with co-streams that just are buggy as hell. So. Yeah. Um, let's see. Boxman, thank you for sending Sparks. Um, now with a co-stream, uh, giveaway with pixelchat.tv, how does the follower giveaway work? Do they have to check if they are a follower on the channel running or does it not care what channel they're following? Actually, that's what makes it even harder. Pixel Chat TV requires you to be on the channel of the person doing the giveaway. So you're going to force everyone who's watching on whatever channel they want to move into the host channel that's doing the giveaway. It's a nightmare. It's not worth doing. <laughs> it's really bad. It's really bad. I just, there is some benefits as, as, as big as pointed out, I just don't think they override the cons right now. There's so many cons. Um, if, if you got the follow all button, that would help. When the technology improves so you can get streams up and stable on the same screen, that would help. Separating the chats from each other would massively help. Also, one of the big things, too, is you got to think of it this way, right? How much work and patience have you done to uh, to get your stream at the perfect bit rate, screen resolution, all that stuff. Now you're bringing in someone else who has different specs. It's so difficult, right? Like, your upload speed matters for your own stream. Imagine the difference between uh, your upload stream or your upload speed from one streamer to having both people trying to connect to the same channel. It's tough. It's hard to do. I, I've streamed a little just as an example. I would be streaming at uh, 720 at probably 60 frames per second, but at 2500 bit rate, where I know big is probably a lot higher than that. And our streams would never sync together right. It just, it would be, you'd have that out of sync deal where you'd hear me talking over his deal. And then a couple seconds later, you'd see me talk. Yeah. So. That's actually the, the good benefit out of Discord is that when you hear Bad Frog come through, you see his mouth move, except for either the minuscule delay that Discord has, um, which it tries to match the uh, the voice to anyway, uh, dependent on the delay of the camera. Um, and second, uh, if you guys are seeing a delay, I'm seeing the delay as well. Um, so if he's lagging, uh, and he's not hearing me talk for like 30 seconds. I mean, that's forever long. Th that never happens. But can you, can you go that long? Can, I'm just asking. What? Can you go 30 seconds without talking? I'm just curious. Can I go 30 seconds without talking? Yeah. Rude. Um, <laughs> but um, if uh, if that were the case, you guys wouldn't even see him talk um, until I saw him talk. So that's the benefit out of it. Uh, Zybit says, I burned 2,000 calories yesterday. That's the last time she leaves the uh, uh, the, uh, the brownies in the oven while you take a nap. That's a good way to burn 2,000 calories. Yep. All your brownies are gone. <laughs> um, but yeah, so pros and cons to co-streaming. Don't know if it changes any of your opinion because I am saying co-streaming is great so long as you know what you're doing with it. If you don't have anything prepared for it, absolutely don't do it it's the worst um limited small streamers i can kind of see it once you get into big streamers even I, I, I big is almost in the big streamer thing it's just a numbers game to me yeah um 
it makes no sense for him to stream with somebody with 5,000 viewers because he's or 5,000 followers. He ain't going to gain a thing on it. Now that person's going to gain a lot because he's going to be opened up to a big community that he's not there. Which is funny because I've actually streamed. Uh, my friend DJ um, was at like 8,000. So I made it to like 70,000 followers uh, and he didn't take off. Um, he was stuck around the 8,000 and I still co-stream with him anyway. And yeah, he gets a lot out of it. I don't get that much out of it, but at that point it doesn't matter to me because, you know, I just have a, like a show a friendship with that guy. But yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. So I, I would love to go there, but that's a serious TO, TOS issue, British chairs. So I'm not going to touch that with a 10 foot pole. So uh, I would love to. We uh we have intentions of talking about dress code on streaming. We have to talk about the uh we we would basically have to stick to what TOS says. Yep. Um cuz putting opinions on that matter is very risky of uh streamers to be able to talk about stuff like that. So TOS is terms of service. Terms of service. Cuz essentially when you talk about that stuff, it's basically saying Oh, look at what Big says women are and are not allowed to wear. I'm not saying anything along that line. You can wear whatever you want, you know? Um, so uh it's it's a very uh it's it's a very controversial it's almost as bad as talking about politics and talking about religion. It's a really, really yep. like down the rabbit hole conversation you might not want to get into so and the at the basics without going into it if you see what you think is a tos violation as far as a clothing code it's your option to report that channel yeah um that's the only way mixer's probably going to see it unless a random staff person comes in there while something is but yeah, you can report them. So even though I always say, like, you know, don't go around reporting people because you get yourself banned on Mixer, you can report something that you think is wrong. Just don't go around to every channel doing it. But you have to be sure that what you're reporting is true. If you think that someone is showing, like, way too much skin, that's that's a legit thing to report on. And you're going to let Mixer decide whether that's true or not. So, but for us to discuss it is just a time bomb. It's, uh, it's just bad. Uh, speak to the Snapchat picks for subs. That is illegal. You cannot do that. Um, that is considered uh, gambling. Uh, you what are not allowed. That? Snapchat pictures for subs. Oh, you know, my. I mean, if you know the topic oh. of uh, premium Snapchats, which is basically nude snapchats uh yeah there are some streamers on both or on multiple uh streaming sites that offer their premium snapchats to their subscribers you are not allowed to do that that is uh that is very against tos so um so like patreon but for mixer No. Oh, I... Do you know what premium Snapchat is, Muffin? Premium Snapchat is... So it's part of the pornography industry. It's Snapchat. It's a Snapchat account that you have to request access to. So essentially, you go to a website where you pay for it. You pay for the Snapchat access. You give them your Snapchat uh, friend, like friend request like whatever your name is on Snapchat, and they will add you. So you're paying for to be on their friends list on Snapchat. And it's essentially pornography. Um, so what some streamers do on Mixer or Twitch is say, if you sub to me, I'll add you to my premium Snapchat. That is illegal. You cannot do that. That is very bad. Because um, essentially you're selling... Um, you're selling pornography on the streaming services, and that's bad. You cannot do that at all. Um, uh, plus, on top of it, it is also 
Um, it is also like, it's, it's a weird crossover between like, um, gambling, because if you're offering the service, but Mixer can't prove that you're doing this, um, you're essentially lying to these people saying that they're receiving something that they're not. Um, so, um, it's, it's bad for two reasons. So, and yeah, if your stream is teen rated, like I, I actually saw this somewhere else that I'm not going to discuss, but, uh, they said, what if their stream is always rated as 18 plus, can they do it? The answer is still no, you know, um, even if someone is agreeing to be 18 plus, it doesn't give you the right to sell, um, uh, pornography on a streaming service. So, yeah, it's, I would, I would, and I've been wrong a couple times and it's been, had to be straightened out on it. I would read the TOS. There's a couple of pages I would read. And once you read it, you will find out how wrong the information on Mixer is that is passed out by streamers. I, it's, it's incredible how many streamers I see that give out bad information. Oh yeah. It spreads around. I mean, whole, and uh, anyone can be wrong. I can be wrong on some things, but I know that one for sure is bad. Uh, uh, I, I mean, bad frog has been wrong a couple of times, especially yep. like with, uh, talking about alcohol on stream. You can talk yep, about this stuff. You can talk about pornography. You can talk about alcohol. You can't display and you can't sell it. Obviously, if I'm talking about pornography, I can't go into, like, details of that stuff, but I can talk about it, you know? So, uh, there's... Wow, okay. But... <laughs> uh, but, yeah, you can uh, you can talk about the subject itself, you know? Um, going into details along that line, you're probably getting into dangerous zones. So... Um, it's just like I found out the other day. You can cuss as much as you want on Yep, on a teen too. stream, you can uh, you can use profanity. Uh, I just don't. I don't think it. There are words that I don't think teens should be using. That's my personal opinion, and I'm allowed to express that on my own channel. I don't think teens should be using some of these words, and you know that's fine. You know, um, and that's like I said, that's my personal opinion. Bad Fr bad frog might uh, disagree, and that's fine if he wants to disagree. This isn't his channel. This is my channel. Exactly. So I, I, I'll, I get away with some stuff in his channel that a lot of people don't. I freely admit that, but I've been here a long time. Yeah, there are, and I've and I've bought that. I've 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 bought that trust that I won't go too far. And if I do, I recognize it, or somebody will recognize it, shut me down, and I'm good. Yeah. Um. But I've started to take everywhere I go as. I try to be the same way in every channel because it's so hard to remember the rules of all these channels. But if you back down to less profane and all that stuff, you can't be wrong in any channel. So yeah. that's kind of a better way to look at it. Don't go in a channel and say, oh, it's 18 plus. I could drop F-bombs in the channel because you probably can't. It's 18 plus because of the game. It has nothing to do with anything else. Yeah. So... Um, that was my my other thing. Uh, so British. I mean, if you see someone doing this, you should report the channel for it. And if you can provide proof along the matter, that's what they're going to be looking for. Um, uh, that's just my personal opinion on it. Uh, from what I've seen from Mixer staff. Uh, Firemaster said so. It's bad to say I will pay you money if you add me as a friend. I mean, no. yeah, you don't want to go into channels and say that because it doesn't seem like you're a legitimate person. You mean it's not illegal to say it or anything? Don't you can. Do it. Well, but... I think that where he was headed was you've got streamers that say, "I'm not going to let add you as a friend unless you sub to me." There's oh. a re reality based reason for that. You could only have so many friends on Xbox. Yeah, there's if a big. If big tried to friend. 88,000 people, it's not possible. So he's got to cut it down to those that, that yeah. are paid supporters. Mine is is exactly that. If you subscribe, I will add you. But I can't add all of my followers because you only get 1,000 friends on Xbox and uh, and I have 88,000 followers. It's just not possible. I, I literally have 87,000 people who would complain. But for my subscribers who pay to subscribe even though no one is forcing them to do that as a thank you 
I add them back. So it's just one of the benefits that I give. So, um, but yeah, um, that's completely different than saying if you sub to me, I'll let you have access to porn. That's yeah, that's just... different. <laughs> that's a very different thing. Are are we gonna do this for Miss Muffin? Are oh 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 oh. Uh, I was like, what are you talking about? Um. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what we're doing, but uh, Muffin, happy birthday. Uh, it's been your birthday on the East Coast of the United States for an hour now. Uh, happy birthday. Uh, we're happy for, for you, and we hope that you have a fantastic day. Um, enjoy some time on your new Nintendo Switch. Uh, you know you have a very loving family here, and we hope that you have the best day. It'll be tomorrow, but... Uh, yeah. It's officially your birthday, so celebrate now. So. And where is Miss Muffin? Well, she's got to be here in the chat somewhere. Okay. And as Muffin knows, I have this thing I do Monday through Friday. It's just the thought of the day where I have some random. Oh God. No, these are good. Ask Muffin; <laughs> she knows. I don't do my 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 words to live by. But oh, okay. The one for tomorrow, I'll let her see now if I can get it to paste. And it'll take it. Oh, too many characters. Oh, God. Break it up into halves. Let's see if I take that off there. If that doesn't work, I'll break it off. Ah, too many emotes, British. There. Holy. That's for you tomorrow is what's going to be my thought of the day. Ah, Bad Frog said, Today is a very special day for someone who has become a bit of a little sister to me. People like me don't make friends easily, and to someone who trusts you enough to share their thoughts and fears with is something to be cherished. To my little mixer sister, Muffin on Mars, I wish you a very happy birthday, and may all of your dreams become reality. How so. nice Bad Frog does have a heart. <laughs> me and old Mr. Grinch. <laughs> Now, don't spread that story around because <laughs> people start taking advantage of me and thinking they can get away with stuff. I'm greed for a reason. So, uh, no, anyway, but, yeah, seriously. That was, that, that's for you, Muffin. I was waiting to post that. I showed Gloomy that the other day. So, But that's why I wanted you to stay out of my uh, Thought of the Day channel in my Discord. So, thank mm. you. <laughs> Um, I, have, I have a Discord channel where I write these things. Oh, and okay. Does, and and gives me hell about them, so I told her she had to stay out of it. Gotcha. Uh, no, but really, happy birthday, Muffin. Uh, we'll have to do something special for you during my regular stream tomorrow. Um, uh, but yeah, I think that's going to bring us to the end of Mixcast episode 26. Um, if you guys have thoughts, uh, let you win my party. <laughs> Well, we'll see. <laughs> um, and, I, and I sent you the proof. Whales are on the list. I'm going to personally list. study whales. You should see if so there's I any whale have, news. I'm going to look for some whale news, and we're going to have whale conversation, and I'm going to make Muffin happy. We're going to talk about whales. <laughs> so there you go. Um. Whale watching here in uh, Seattle, Muffin. Seattle to Oregon is a good time. Uh, I, you just have to go during season. Um, but yeah, uh, that'll bring us to the end of episode 26. We do have tomorrow's episode, episode 27. Um, and I think, I, did we do a week straight? I think we did a week straight, right? We're at five days. So, yeah, we actually don't have a mix cast on Saturday or Sunday. That's yeah. that's weird. <laughs> I don't know what I'm going to do all weekend. I know. That's weird. We're going to have to find some topics, which means you guys need to go into the mixer uh, or the, the Discord, the mix cast channel. Today is only Thursday. I know. Tomorrow is mix cast. Last and episode I, for the week. I, I took one of them and then decided I just didn't care enough about the other one. Damn. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh legit thank you uh what time are you streaming i might be on a little earlier tomorrow i do have some things i'm trying to get done like small things around the house get the house clean shaving my head tomorrow morning it's on the list 
Uh, I'm going to read some of Little's book, uh, which is actually on my list to do tonight. Um, there's a whole bunch of different things. Ooh, okay. I will do that. Um, Ooh, can you send it to me? Yeah, you can send it to him. Uh, but yeah, um, join the Discord. Please put topics in the Mixcast channel. Uh, Ahmad can give you the link to the Discord if you're not already in it. Uh, you can follow Ben. Uh, ben. I read Ben in the chat. You can follow Bad Frog. Um, Bob Ross. Uh, Bob Ross on Twitter uh, with the link in the chat. And you can follow me on Twitter with the link in the chat. Um, and that's pretty much all we got for you. If you missed the code of the day, watch the recap tomorrow. If you missed any of the previous ones, they will all be uploaded tomorrow. Uh, I get my new hard drive tomorrow, so I'll finally be able to download stuff and upload it to the internet. So uh, we will be all caught up on that. Um, and that's about all we got for you. So thanks for stopping by for episode 26. Um, any last thoughts, Bad Frog? Uh, no, other than... Uh... As always, I appreciate you guys showing up and being part of the conversation because without it's you, it's just me and Big talking to each other and that's going to turn into me picking on him. Or me talking so, about Teslas the whole time. Exactly, and I'm going to go to sleep. <laughs> um, but anyway, I, I, you don't know how much it means that you guys keep showing up, you keep participating. It's what makes the show work. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely, Gloomy. Yeah, no, uh, I like two hours is not that bad. Like, <laughs> Bad Frog wanted to end it at the one thirty, and I appreciate it because uh, I always say that I try not to go into the two hour. But um, I I was okay going into. I didn't want those two topics to be. It was pretty much a tiny topic and then one giant topic. I'd rather get the third topic in there. So, um, but yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time tomorrow. We will be here for episode 27 of Mixcast. Um, we'll have some new topics for you, another new code, and we're getting close to the last few days of the year. So we might have some uh, New Year's topics for you guys. So you guys have a fantastic night, uh, and we'll see you tomorrow. Thanks, yep. guys. Bye. See ya.